Hey readers! Today I want to talk to you about an excellent nonfiction book I just recently read. It's David Graeber's The Utopia of Rules on Technology, Stupidity, and the Secret Joys of Bureaucracy. David Graeber is one of my favorite thinkers living today, bar none. There are maybe a handful of other thinkers out there who I think are as good as him at making me think about commonplace ideas and assumptions in a new light, and making me rethink things that I uh, had always taken for granted before. I've done a lot of writing in the past about David Graeber's previous book, uh, Debt, The First 5,000 Years. I probably wrote, I don't know, like 30 blog posts about that book, so I'll put a link below if you want to read about what I think about David's previous work. But today, this book, about bureaucracy. Now, I can't summarize the whole book for you or anything, uh, but I want to kind of dive into a couple of the coolest ideas uh, in the book, a couple of the things that really stood out to me. His basic thesis in the book is that bureaucracy is a sort of systematized form of violence. It's a way that we incorporate violence down into the daily, everyday nitty-gritty of our lives. Uh, bureaucracy sort of invades like the roots of a plant deeper and deeper into our lives, and uh, it's a form of systematized violence. You can see this if you think about for a second uh, what is done to sort of enforce the bureaucracy. Because the violence of bureaucracy is sort of invisible. We, we don't think of going into a clerk's office and filling out forms and checking boxes as being particularly violent. The violence becomes apparent when you realize um, what would happen uh, if you were to sort of uh, persistently resist the bureaucratic structure. Um, how the bureaucratic structure would be enforced, and, you know, through policing, through imprisonment, through, uh, through you know, violent, through use of force to, to make sure that the bureaucracy was implemented. Which leads to one of the best lines in the book, which is where David Graeber describes police officers as bureaucrats with batons, which is kind of true. So anyway, bureaucracy is systematized violence, and when he starts to think about the, like, implications of that and what that would mean for our relationships in life, there's some interesting um, conclusions that he draws. So first of all, if I'm going to interact with you uh, or any other human being in any way, it's going to require uh, what David Graeber calls interpretive labor. That is, any kind of interaction I'm going to have with you, I'm going to be trying to communicate something, whether it's with words or it's whether my facial expressions or my gestures or through trade or any kind of interaction I have with you is going to be communicative. And to do that, the interpretive labor I have to do is I have to imagine from your perspective, what you want, what you need, how you're going to be able to understand this. Uh, in other words, I have to, ahead of time, think a little bit about who you are in order to be able to communicate effectively to you. The exception to this rule, that all human interaction is communicative and all human interaction requires some interpretive labor, is violence. Uh, violence is about the one form of human interaction which doesn't require that interpretive labor beforehand. I pretty much don't have to know anything about you to be able to hit you over the head and, you know, get what I want from you. It's a, it's a minimal amount of interpretive labor required uh, for, for violence to be effective, for violence to accomplish what it's going for. So violence is sort of the least communicative of uh, human interactions possible. So if bureaucracy is this diffused violence, this violence uh, systematized throughout our society, the effect of bureaucracy is to try to reduce m as many human interactions as possible to the least amount of interpretive labor possible between people, the least amount of sort of imagining and thinking about the other person as possible. Bureaucracy essentially deadens our empathy, deadens our need to try to interpret or understand each other as much as possible. It reduces human interactions to forms of interaction which don't require us to think about each other very much. Interestingly, because of the fact that there is an imbalance of power in most human relations, this interpretive labor isn't equally shared across human interactions. In other words, uh, when there's an imbalance of power, the person with the less power has to do more of the heavy lifting, more of the interpretive labor, than the person with more power. This is easily demonstrated through examples of like sitcom jokes and stuff. There's a kind of trope, uh, a common joke that is expressed in sitcoms, not just in sitcoms, in everyday life, which is um, the idea that women are just sort of incomprehensible to men. Men just can't understand women. They can't imagine what women think or what women want or, or what women need. Um, whereas this joke is almost never uh, expressed in reverse. It's sort of assumed that women don't have 
any trouble at all understanding man. And if you think about it, uh, the reason why the, this joke, why this imbalance exists is pretty obvious. For uh, most of human history, the power imbalance between men and women is such that women haven't had any choice but to spend a great deal of emotional and mental energy attempting to understand men, attempting to interpret them, attempting to put themselves in men's place and uh, be able to guess what they're going to do in order to be able to effectively communicate. But because men have had this power imbalance, because so much of the relationship from the male perspective could rest upon a sort of violent undercurrents, that is, men could always get what they want through sheer force, through sheer power, they were required to do less of this interpretive labor. And being required to do less, they did do less. And doing less, they were, in effect, actually stupider. In other words, privilege and power make you stupid. They, they make you uh, not have to engage in uh, emotional, intellectual, uh, imaginative exercises to try to understand other people. And if you don't have to do those things, you tend not to do those things. And if you tend not to do those things, then you tend to fail at understanding other people. But because our society is set up with these bureaucratic structures where violence is sort of systematized or it's distributed through the whole system, that lack of understanding for people of power and privilege is not necessary. We have made it possible for us to get by in our privilege without needing that understanding. We've enabled our ignorance by virtue of allowing so many of our relationships to be founded on violence, to be founded on the hidden violence of bureaucracy. This is a, a fascinating book. That is just one example of dozens of examples in the book that made me think about things in a fresh way, uh, made me consider things in a way I had not before. So you should definitely pick it up. David Graeber's The Utopia of Rules. But you don't have to take my word for it. A utopia of rules? That sounds amazing! Whatever, man. No place that's got, like, Rules in the name can be a utopia, like, by definition. Is everyone in this utopia an accountant? A dystopia, maybe. Can I be an accountant? Hey, what if, like, a dystopia is not, like, a bad place, but it's a good place where the diss track is, like, the most important form of art? <laughs>